What's up friends of the good mood, this is Money and welcome to the next episode of those auto farming fleet tutorials for Vega Conflict. Some of you have already realized that there was episode 1, 2 and 3 and then there was episode 5 uh, for VSEC, but there was no episode 4. Now this is going to be episode 4 because I knew I was going to try to do an episode with a one hit full auto fleet kill against level 40 cargo. It's not going to be 100% auto, we have to do a couple of clicks in the beginning, but that's it, alright, the rest is auto. So what do we need for this? Um, we basically use the same fleet that we have seen in episode uh, 5 uh, against VSEC at the end. It's their Mark II Rancor battleships with Gladius Driver 1 and 2, a mix of both, okay? So the tech requirements of this one is obviously higher, but it allows us to take on level 40 uh, Vega cargo fleets in one hit, okay? And that's, re that's really good. Alright, let's take a quick look at the blueprints, guys, okay? Obviously the most important one is the Apocrypha Cruiser here, not only because it's purple, but, but also because it's one of the most used PvP cruisers in the game and uh, there is one more information why this cruiser is very very good for you guys to get um, you can have it earlier than the rebel revelation cruiser the revelation cruiser pendant from the rebels which we can regularly research requires a ship lab and ship factory of level 9 the apocrypha cruiser is better and only requires level 8 of both okay so you can have that ship a lot earlier than the revelation cruiser and if you follow those tutorials of mine from 1 to 5 then you probably have it even earlier than you have researched and uh, upgraded the module so far that you can build revelation cruisers so it's a really good one okay the Repulsor Shield and Blast Shield are two recharging shields for your ships. They allow you to have lower repair time because they also offer lower base shield capacity, but they have the ability to recharge that as often as you want, as long as the, the shield energy was never fully depleted, okay? And uh, the Thermal Beam is one of your best rushing weapons if you don't have event blueprints like the Aurora Ray yet, or uh, if you don't want to use the Seco Missiles, for example, then the Thermal Beam is one of your best rush weapons. It, they're very often being used on ships that only have three weapon slots, like Typen Cutters, uh, maybe some Frigates, or the Python Cutter, or, well, some Cutters, basically all the Cutters. Um, Tachyon Beam Laser is basically the same thing, just for the base, and uh, yeah, it's, um, it's not level 3, unfortunately, but it's still really good and a good weapon against rushing fleets. And then we have the Meta Phase Shield level 3 for the base also, uh, which you should try to get also because it really, really offers a good amount of protection against all weapon types. Now, what is the new thing that we really need in order to make all this possible? We need the Gladius Driver level 2, which we should have been able to farm on the previous level, uh, episode 3. Okay, so I hope you have that already because that's what we are gonna need. Alright, here we are finally with the combat part of this video. You can see level 40 Vega Cargo, that's what we are going to attack. And I'm not kidding, I spent two hours just trying to figure out those two clicks in the beginning to make it work. <laughs> you can see here those three red battleships right there on the opposite side of those. So in this case on the upper right side, we perform one left click to make all our ships turn. For this we use these minimal uh, range uh, indicators um, of our ships as, an, as a help to know where we click, okay? A little bit down down there, not exactly between those two arcs, because then some would turn right, some would turn left. A little bit further up, we perform one left click. That may that means that our ships will now turn all the same direction and um, all the same speed, obviously, too. So, and as soon as our ships have all turned 90 degrees to face upwards in this case, we perform one right click to make them straight. Right here, I stopped the video for a moment. You can see here, once again, we're using the maximum range uh, firing arc indicators to know where we have to click, okay? Right there, where the mouse cursor is currently, uh, we perform this one right click as soon as they have turned uh, 90 degrees, okay, to have the fleet approaching directly sideways. And um, yeah, for this we can use those indicators, which is very, very good, and that's all we have to do. Now we could exit the combat, and that's it. We don't have to do anything anymore. From now on, the fleet will behave in auto mode very, very well, because as soon as they have reached this position that we gave them the order to move to, uh, they will resume auto mode on their own, okay? okay? We don't have to be and have to watch the combat for doing this. I will just do it here so you know how the combat will look like in the end, okay? <laughs> those uh, Apocrypha Cruisers will still very quickly eliminate our battleships here, but um, yeah, it's, it's still okay. And then you can see here, because we are straving away, those Dread Battleships are not really getting in firing range in the beginning. So this one Rancor Battleship can already perform uh, a few, or, or, or well, give a couple of sh uh, shots out before they even get in range. Now, they will now reach this point. 
And uh, this is very important because uh, from this point on they will resume auto mode on their own, which is also really good because if they don't, uh, the battleships sometimes get out of their firing arcs and kill those ships uh, if they are still striving away. So we really need to make them resume auto mode at this point. In this case, it might have been, it might have worked if they would have gone a little bit further. But sometimes they move differently, those dread battleships, and uh, move out of the firing arc of your battleships while then being able to fire. Okay, so that is a bad one. And also we have here, you can see 5.6 million resources still in that fleet, and we already collected 500,000. So it's around 6 million resources in each and every single one of those Vega 40 cargos. It's crazy. And that's why I would advise you guys to get yourself a cargo fleet nearby to be able to collect all those resources, okay? So let's check out the repair time. Alright, and that's what the repair looks like, in most cases around 20 minutes of repair time, which doesn't really matter much because every single ship is a free instant repair anyways, right? And you can also see we're using the Rancor Battleships Mark II, so you have to farm the planetary crafting fleets, all beginning with the word Rebel, in order to get yourself, get yourself the patterns and parts in order to craft those ships. Just use multiple ones of those basic Mark I versions of this fleet uh, in order to farm yourself those crafting mater materials really easy and fast, okay? So repair as always, we remove as many ships as we need in order to have a free instant repair right there um, and then we click that and then we put back in every single one free instant repair and so on okay so this way we didn't have to spend one coin in order to do that and yet we're still farming the tier 4 uh, Vega blueprint with only Rancor battleships. And as usual, here we are with my document of thoughts and requirements for this fleet. Vega tier 4 blueprint half auto farming fleet low to medium level tech. Okay, Six times Mark II Rancor battleships in a box formation uh, fitted with shockwave shield level 2 or better yet meta face shield level 1 if you have that, iridium magnets level 2, straight thrusters level 3, playsteel armor 1 and gladius driver 1 twice, gladius driver 2 twice. Okay. And the fleet characteristics are build time for one entire fleet, 2 days, 10 hours, 19 minutes, mostly because of the Gladius driver level 2 now, it's higher build time. Individual ship repair below 5 minutes as usual, and um, collect around 500,000 resources in one go. And estimated repair cost after one Vega 40 cargo fleet is around uh, 800,000 helium and 180,000 antimatter, but you just saw how many re resources you would get out of it, right? Okay, module requirements is bridge level 4, fleet bay level 8, ship factory 5, ship lab 5, tech lab 6, arms lab 8. I had no way of knowing though if the Mark II Rancor upgrade, which you also have to research, requires higher tech. I couldn't see that, not even the Vega Wiki allowed me to see that, okay? So that might be possible, but for now I think that those are the requirements. Oh, by the way, and this entire document is as usual in the video description for you to find, okay, to check out what you need uh, without having to watch the video re over and over. Then the research requirements are obviously the, uh, or the blueprint, is the blueprint Gladius Driver 1 completed and the blueprint Gladius Driver 2 completed. Rail Driver level 1, 2 and 3, Gauss Driver 1, 2 and 3 and the Mass Driver 1 and 2. You need those in order to be able to use the Gladius Driver level 2. Iridium Magnets 1 and 2 obviously, Straight Thrusters 1, 2 and 3, Rancor Battleship itself and the Rancor Battleship Mark II upgrade. You have to research that also in the ship lab. Um, my advice, build yourself around two of those fleets and operate them at the same time. Have a cargo fleet nearby to pick up the plentiful resources. Use the tag fleet function in order to find the fleets very easy you're looking for. Share resources with your alliance members, which I always find very helpful uh, or important. Then important next steps, okay, for the next and future tutorial video episodes. Um, when there's a chance for you to get get yourself the meta phase shield level 1, get it immediately and equip it to all those ships, okay? Uh, it's just better in every single way. Uh, build yourself at least six broads or destroyers, yes, you heard right. Uh, get those broadsword destroyers to be Mark III, uh, which you can also farm at the same time when you're farming the Gladius Dryer, uh, the uh, Mark uh, II uh, upgrades for the Rancor battleships. Uh, research face projectiles as high as possible. It's uh, it's uh, special for, for for to make your uh, your projectile weapons deal direct armor damage instead of first shields. Okay. And then we have frequently asked questions, does this work against level 40 cargo fleets? Uh, in two hits, yes, uh, but not in one hit, okay? Does it work against crafting fleets? Yes. All planetary fleets can be fought in half auto or full auto combat, okay? And if you found this video helpful and you would like to contribute to my channel and my work here too, then you could click the link in the video description to get to my Patreon page, see how many people we have supporting this little community of mine. It's currently a palindrome with 1, 2 and 3, and uh, what the next goals are and what personal, re personal rewards I came up with in order to thank you personally for your pledge and you could enjoy all those early access videos that will be posted right here, okay? So 
thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe as brutal as a man can it for more. Thanks for bearing with me. You guys are awesome as always. Money Gaming signing off. Bye-bye.